This is supine cadaver. I'm standing on the left side. Camera person is on the left side. So let's take a look at this fascia which we have lifted up here. We have slit it here. And this is the fascia that we have lifted up. And you can see it clearly on the medial side. I'll do the same thing on the lateral side. We can see this fascia here. This is the fascia let of the thigh. The fascia let of the thigh is a very thick, deep fascia which completely invests the thigh. Like a cylinder. Superiorly, it is attached to the inguinal ligament. You can see that here. And inferiorly, it continues and it becomes continuous with the fascia of the leg and the fascia of the knee. It completely forms a cylindrical circle encircling of all the muscles and the deep vessels of the thigh. On the lateral side, it gives a septum, a very prominent septum called the lateral intermuscular septum, which covers the vastus lateralis and it gets attached to the posterior aspect, that is the linea aspera. The medial part has got two intermuscular septum, but they are not very prominent. Fascia let of the thigh. Laterally, as it continues, it becomes extremely thick. And we can see that here. And I have retracted the lateral part and you can see how thick it is. So we can see that the, this is the interior of the lateral aspect of the fascia letter. And this is so thick that it's almost like a cartilage. This is called the iliotibial tract. This has got a completely different function. This provides an aponeurotic expansion of two muscles. One is the gluteus maximus and the other is the tensor fascia letter. Both of them are gluteal muscles and it gets attached to a tubercle on the anterolateral aspect of the tibia called the tubercle of Jerdy. Having mentioned that, now let's come back to the fascia letter itself. This acts like a compartment. Take for example a patient who has sustained burn of the thigh. He gets fluid exudation under the fascia letter and that is called a third space loss. Inside the blood vessels, inside the cells, third space means outside of these two structures that's why it's called third space loss. Similarly, if a person gets a fracture of the femur, the person can get a loss of blood into the third space as much as 2.5 to 3 liters. Now this third space loss can lead to hypovolemic shock in the patient. So therefore it is important while calculating the fluid replacement to calculate the volume of fluid loss. And for that, what we do is we measure the circumference of the normal thigh and then we measure the circumference of the swollen thigh and use the formula of a cylinder pi r squared h and we determine how much is the excess volume and that determines how much is the third space fluid loss which will help us in calculating the fluid balance. So that is one aspect of this deep fascia or the fascia light of the thigh. The next point which I wanted to emphasize is if you take a look at the inguinal region where I said the fascia light is attached. If you look just superficial to the inguinal ligament you will find this structure which I have lifted up here. This is the membranous layer of the abdominal fascia, the superficial fascia of the abdomen, and we can see that clearly here. The membranous layer is known as the scarpus fascia. The scarpus fascia comes down from the abdomen and it gets attached to the upper part of the fascia letter just below the inguinal ligament. And this line of attachment is called the Holden's line. Have you ever wondered when we are doing abdominal examination of a patient, we ask the patient to slightly flex the hip. The reason for that is when we ask the patient to flex the hip, we make this fascia slightly lax and therefore it enables us to palpate the abdominal contents. That is the surgical basis of this attachment of the scarpus fascia to the fascia lat. Now let's take a look at some other aspects. We can see these superficial veins. This is the long saphenous vein and these are the tributaries and we can see that they're piercing through this opening here. This is called the saphenous opening and we can see it's got a sharp lateral margin and a blurred medial margin. And after piercing through the saphenous opening, it opens into the femoral vein. And we can see many other tributaries here. All these tributaries, as a matter of fact, they pierce through the fascia letter. So for that, I'm going to reflect this medial portion of the fascia letter. And when I reflect, we can see this structure. And if we zoom the camera closely, we can see that here, we, there's a vein here in the middle, and there's a nerve here. These two structures, they pierce through the fascia letter and they go out and they come superficially. So we know that through the opening in the fascia letter, the vein pierces and the cutaneous nerve also pierces. And the cutaneous nerve then supplies the skin and the vein. This vein which pierces through is referred to as the perforating vein and the perforator. The perforators communicate with the superficial veins and the blood normally flows from superficial to deep and they are directed by unidirectional valves. If these perforating veins become incompetent, then blood will flow in the reverse direction from deep to superficial and will lead to localized variceal dilatations of the superficial veins. When they happen on the medial side of the thigh, they are referred to as the phenom pharynx. So this is one such structure which I showed you. Let me show you yet another one on this side. We can see here, there is an opening which we have enlarged and we can see this vein coming out. And accompanying that is the superficial cutaneous nerve and we can see that nerve also here. So this is one of the branches of the anterior femoral cutaneous nerve which is a branch of the femoral nerve and we can see this vein also. And if I turn this back, we can see this is the vein and this is the nerve. So both the vein, the perforating vein and the cutaneous nerve, they go through these openings. Now we shall come to the lateral aspect and we can see some more of these things in a much more prominent way. 
we can see this vein penetrating through. This is a perforating vein. We can see another vein penetrating through. This is another perforating vein. I'm going to lift up the lateral aspect and we can see if I turn this, zoom the camera, we can see that this is the place where it is perforating through. The reason why they're called perforating veins is because they perforate through the deep fascia and they transmit blood from superficial to deep. And as I mentioned, the blood is always unidirectional. If these valves become incompetent, then the reversal flow occurs and it leads to localized dilatations. When these things happen in the leg, then it leads to varicose veins. And in the leg, there's a surgery where they do subfacial ligation of these perforating veins, which is a rather tedious surgical procedure. Let me come back to this opening, which I had mentioned earlier. This is called the saphenous opening. So this is an oval-shaped opening in the upper part of the fascia letter through which several structures pierce through. This was covered by a thin membrane called the cribriform fascia, which we have removed. It is pierced by, we can see the long saphenous vein, which I mentioned opens into the femoral vein. It is also pierced by the lymphatics, which drain lymphatics from the superficial to the deep root, superficial inguinal to the deep inguinal lymph nodes. Because they are perforated by multiple lymphatic channels, the thin membrane is called the cribriform fascia. The word cribriform means multiple sieve-like openings. I will draw your attention to these nerves, which I had mentioned earlier. These are the branches of femoral nerve, and there are hundreds of them, which we have picked up, only two of them. These are known as anterior femoral cutaneous nerve. They supply a large portion of the anterior and the medial portion of the thigh. Then I would draw your attention to these nerves, which we see on the lateral aspect. This is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. This is a separate nerve all by itself, which comes from the posterior division of the lumbosacral plexus, L23. It goes under the inguinal ligament and it pierces through the deep fascia and it supplies the skin on the anterolateral aspect. Of if this nerve gets entrapped, under the inguinal ligament on the lateral aspect where it is attached to the anterior superior iliac spine here then it can lead to tingling numbness and paresthesia in this distribution and that is referred to as meralgia paresthetica finally i will draw your attention to this nerve and if i turn this inguinal ligament we can see other portion of this nerve here inside the inguinal canal this is the ilioinguinal nerve the ilioinguinal nerve runs in the inguinal canal one branch of it goes and supplies the anteromedial aspect of the thigh and the other portion, of course, supplies the skin of the scrotum or the labia majora. The branch which supplies the thigh, that serves as the afferent limb of what is known as the trimester reflex in young male children. So that is another nerve that we can see here. So what we have seen essentially in this dissection are the fascia letter, the thick and lateral portion called the iliotibial tract. We have seen the perforating veins. We have seen the superficial veins. We have seen the cribriform fascia, the saphenous opening. We have seen the cutaneous nerves. We have seen the scarpa's fascia attached to the fascia letter just below the inguinal ligament. And we have seen the surgical significance of fascia letter and the perforating veins. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below.